it's how you line up the audios <laughs> for the two. Clap on. Clap on. Clap on. Clap on. It's a very normal thing. Okay. Are you really going to wear that hat? Yeah. <laughs> You're wearing pajamas. I'm wearing a sweatshirt just like you are. It's backwards. Oh, they, won't, they won't read it. I gotta fix it. Welcome back, everybody. We've got a quick update for you with everything that's going on. We promise it won't be 40 minutes long this yes, time. Yes, and there's very little production going into this because of time and everything that's moving on. Um, I'm going to apologize now because I want to look at myself on the screen, but the camera's <laughs> over here. He's crazy. It's fine. And it's bothering me, and it's probably going to bother you guys because I'm looking that way. So... Uh, Baymax has made it to Grand Design, uh, to their service center, and we've talked in some very exhausting emails. Um, we've finally gotten to a better place. Yes. So, bottom line up front is the repairs are moving forward, and there's been a dramatic improvement in communication. Um, we've been able to talk with, uh, with people and with someone that, uh, sorry, that, understands the questions and is able to go and find those answers and communicate them in a way that makes sense. Um, and we're very grateful for that. So, um, with that, uh, let's see. So things are moving quickly. Um, our priority for us as a family and people is making sure that we, um, that we maintain that forward progress and that things are going to be, um, that the repairs are going to get done. And all that's going to happen. So um, this will probably be our only update. That's one. The ums. We're working on the ums this time. <laughs> she wanted to make a drinking game out of it. I did. How many times do you say, um, we can have a drink? <laughs> so the, um, and I think, and we wouldn't be the first people to say this, but uh, we will put out a more in-depth video when it comes back. Um, we can talk about some stuff, and when I say we can talk, we can tell you what it is that we discuss through phone conversations, but we feel like it would have more meaning and it will make more sense to be able to talk about it. And then like if we talk about, well, they're gonna weld a gusset here. Well, let's let us get it here and we can take a picture and show you the gusset instead of just talking about it. So, um, and a lot of it's just time. It's a busy time of year for us. Um, we're dealing with this stuff on the side on top of everything else. So we'll do a more appropriate and in-depth version of this. Um, in the meantime, people can ask questions and stuff too. And we'll see what we can sort out. But So it's going to be a pretty high level, high altitude look at what it is that's going on. But we wanted to follow up um, and give fair and honest uh, representation both sides. Because there's definitely stuff that we're still that's still up in the air, and we're still going after and fighting for. And there's a lot of stuff that's that has, has ironed itself out. So um, we're gonna just quick hit on some of the big stuff from each section of the previous video. Um, and we've definitely got some advice and things to offer folks that are looking down the barrel of this themselves, that are maybe on the front side. Maybe you haven't talked to Grand Design yet. You're going through the dealer, um, et cetera, et cetera. So. With that, we'll move on. Um, so frame flex in general. Um, so this is going to be my words. This is me talking. Drink, everyone. This is going to get obnoxious. It's her fault. <laughs> frame flex. So this is me paraphrasing a lot. Um, but we have had talks and things like that. And um, maybe we'll see how this goes. It would be nice if we could offer something to you guys that corroborates in an official capacity, um, but they absolutely have a repair. They have a set standard. They have, they've they got to have service procedures, but if you go into their shop for frame flex, at least with a model similar to ours and problems in the same wheelhouse, they know that the steel shop is making these parts and it's going to take this long to do it and they're going to install them this way and these are all the associated parts to go with that. That's a thing. 
and and if people are being told that it's not i would encourage you to ask for clarification and then uh, fight on and i don't like i said and, and some of this is it's not uncomfortable because our our experience has changed big time since we started dealing with the people that we are now um but i don't know how they would argue this um it, either way so the point is is that they if you're going up there for fixes similar to ours so there's some nuance that you have to grant them but they they know what they're going to do and so we'll talk about it later in advice section but if if you don't have warm and fuzzies and you don't feel good about what it is that you think they're going to do like there's no reason for that and you should ask you should push and you should be able to be transferred to somebody that can explain what these fixes at least generally are um, so, and then with that too, and a lot of our stuff was their statements that we don't know what the fix is cause we don't see it. And it's like, well, it's, it's fine. If you want to argue that like, we can't tell you we're going to fix this weld and that weld and things like that. Well, it's fine. It's fair. But at the same time, you know that you're putting in 16 pieces of two by two tubing or whatever, not 16. I just made that up, you know, but there's gussets here. We're doing this with the, with the lag bolts and you know these things have to be done along the way like those are all questions that should be able to be if you're going there for this fix and it's on you know your repair ticket then ask because they they know and they they should be able to tell you those give you those answers so let's see um and ours is underway um so uh let's see we'll talk about the slide a little bit um, so we put a lot of stuff in there and a lot of it was just because nobody was talking to us. Our main concern and we were able to, to sort this out with them was just from the consumer standpoint and then sprinkle on a little bit of professional experience. If we're talking major frame problems, like we just wanted it like this could be part of it. I don't, and we were trying to do everything we could on the front side to give them as much information as we could so that they could make better decisions on scheduling and preparing the service. Now, this isn't on the closet slide. The closet side is coming out and they're redoing stuff around that. This is the slide that is back in the main living area that we had pictures right. of. Yeah, with the, with the level and it showed like the three quarters of it. It just has yes. to do with the way that the flush floor slide fits yep. in. And um, so... So part one of this was we presented these as questions and more just like, hey, I don't know if this means anything to you guys. Like, so if you see this problem and then you then have this problem and that could indicate this and you check for it by checking the way that the floor looks, that was the point was in in my mind was like, well, here, take take this. I offer this up. You know, tell it's me if it means communication. Well, right. Tell me if it means anything or not. And we just wanted an answer. Like if this is within spec or not spec. And I feel like we mm -hmm. weren't really acknowledged at all that it wasn't going to even be looked at. Well, right. It was, it was never, it was never even on the table. Yeah. There, there was, it was never, it was, we never knew that they saw it. We never knew that they addressed it. They asked about it or that they cared about it. And they never, and they, it would have been better to have just been told, yeah, we don't care. So within like, a 24 hour period, we had left, dropped the kids off, left, and we went and looked at other models same models as ours to compare the slides because by then we still hadn't, hadn't heard anything yet right well we were kind of going to do it anyway just because we we don't like we i don't we don't sit very well i don't i don't sit still and and nobody was going to give us the answers so we were going to go get them ourselves and 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 there was a part two and in, in honesty it's like there was a pretty high potential this this wasn't a big deal and and that's eventually how I think it's turning out. Mm -hmm. um, but then, so the big deal becomes is this was an incredibly simple thing that could have completely been avoided, and um, for different set of reasons. And now that's kind of where we're where we're going and approaching this. But um, like she was saying, we'll cycle some pictures through here. Um, we did walk through. We walked through brand new grand designs, um, similar models, similar size, similar slides, um, similar components. We walked through some competitors. And largely what we found was that it's all over the place. Yeah. We found some, um, so we found, so you'll see that it, it was a competitor, but the slide fits in flush. I don't know why I'm doing this. You're going to look at the picture. The slide <laughs> fits in flush. Flush. Against the floor. And you can tell by the distance that it's 
you know, from the end of the slide to how it fits in, the picture will make sense. You can tell by the way that it fits that some of them slide into the floor further, or you could say maybe extend out further, allowing that to happen. Um, and some of them don't. And it doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. Excuse me. Any rhyme or reason to it. It's just the way that it fits for the day. So now fast forward a day or two, and now I'm talking to people that are answering questions and are able to sit down and talk with me about the mechanics, about how things work with this stuff. And they, um, the way it was explained to us is that largely the whether or not a slide fits correctly is based off of how it fits against the walls. So they look at, is it touching? Is it properly sealing against the seals? You know, is it, is it, is it flush left to right? Is it flush top to bottom? Those kinds of things. And then how it fits into the floor or how the flush mount piece, the tongue slides down into there is largely just a result of how everything else fits. Um, so there's, there's a, they expect a fairly wide range of variants as to how those do fit. And that may not, and that's not even necessarily unit to unit. That could be day to day. That could be set up to set up. So there's lots of things, um, as it was explained. So if it's um, how level it is, uh, temperature, things like that could all play into that. Um, and then, and so I took the opportunity to point out like or catastrophic frame problems. Like the, the, again, like the explanations for this seem fairly simple, and we generally accept them. But at the same time, like. This was exactly why, because we thought there were these variances in these things. And if you had a frame member or a piece that was broken, you could easily cause all of these same, you know, movement issues that they were highlighting with, you know, regards to temperature, if it's leveled or not. Anyway, slide basically was inconclusive. Yeah. So I don't, and so, and what it's become now and, um, who that brings us to a point I forgot to talk about. So the, the, the official answer, and this comes from a few steps earlier, but was that they have from the pictures and everything they can tell, they have no indication to, for concern or to go and investigate or look at the frame where it matches with the slides. So, and then, so through a couple of conversations, a couple of people, it is it is what it is. They're saying that it's normal and it's acceptable. We can't find anything to tell us otherwise because um, we've seen we've seen similar fittings across the board. So, um, but with that, we'll back up a little bit, going back to the frame flex, uh, talking with the um, the original service writer that we talked to, um, and she did a great job she was talking with us through this like she was the first person that i talked to that was able to answer a lot of questions in rapid fire it was obvious she knew what she was talking about which was what i i was pleased with that um but so they were she was explaining that they don't they have a set point so think of it this way so if you're going in for frame flex they have so part of as i just said i believe they have a set plan to do this that plan starts and stops somewhere and inspection of the frame does not go any farther past that specific fix or another fix like added on to that. So I don't know where that line is, but if you envision your trailer and say they're going to expose that, that phylon or the bulkhead, whatever you want to call it, the piece that goes underneath the neck and then down along your generator compartment, if that's all they're taking off, then that's all they're taking off. And for them to have cause to go farther into the frame, it would require something else to indicate that. Um, so if you're expecting that they're going to do a full frame inspection, that's not going to happen unless you have something specifically wrong with your unit that indicates that you need that. So if that's something that you want, that's something you expect, um, you know, chart your own course. But that's that's the reality of it as it was explained to us. Um, and that kind of ties in with the slide. Nothing we could show them or nothing that they had seen um, to this point would indicate that ours would be inspected beyond the front. I don't want to get ummed again. <laughs> Moving on to the next slide. We're keeping it fast. So let's oh, keep God. moving. 
Uh, communication wise, so just as a whole, we thought that's a big problem. That was where a lot of this stuff lied. It's uh, it's unclear yet exactly what went wrong or where it went wrong. Um, we've been dealing with we've, the repairs are moving. A lot of that stuff's better and moving. The communication can come afterwards. They're obviously going to have it for a few weeks, and we will iron that out for some other reasons that we'll talk about later. They were also very considerate about our timeline too, though, like asking us when we needed it back and yep. all that stuff. So, uh, but yeah, we do want answers um, for as far as one for us because re some way, regardless of how things we, like we talked about, we wanted an extended warranty and stuff. Um, repairs at the shop come with their own warranty. Um, as we understand it, that's a standard thing. So if we had to go through this again, it will be clear to us what we need to do different and how it's going to work differently. And we will make sure that we can pass that on to you guys. All right. So the roof, we had all those pictures of the roof. We were talking about the tears, the torns, the cracks, um, so just up front, this is kind of a developing thing. We have um, reasonable explanations. We don't have anything to show. Um, we don't. All we can offer is the basically it's getting replaced. the The way that they're explaining it was that the tears, the uh, the roof's going to get replaced. the 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 tears, the cracking, and stuff that that we talked about, that we highlighted, that we were concerned about. Um, the explanation we're getting is that it, it was not as it appeared. And it has to do with kind of an optical illusion as it was. Um, and I, I get that that sounds hokey. And like I said, we'll, we'll get better stuff. We want to be able to, to talk about it or figure out how to convey it. But we have to do some research and look for some pictures that we can use to try to explain that to you guys. So uh, so we will work on that, but at the same time, they determined that it, they still were going to replace it. So Which was our main concern. In right, which was one of our, is. yep, which was one of our big concerns. So, so all I can say is that they've been reasonable and they, like I said, it wasn't as we thought it was going to be, but there were still reasons why they've determined that they're going to, they're going to replace that for us. So um, more to follow. All right. So now on the advice section, so what can we give to you people that are, that are on the front side of this? Um, we're going to start with assume nothing, <laughs> make sure that everything you do, you have documented or you have it in emails and then document everything. Right. And I think that saved us a lot. The other thing it's allowed us to do is be able to go backwards. So a lot of things you don't realize, you don't know that you did know until you have to go back and look again. So kind of like proofreading, you find that one, you find the um that you threw in there that you, you just, you didn't, you didn't catch. So, um, Funny. <laughs> um, the big part where that plays in is when you move from the dealer that you originally go to, to grand design service. Now I don't know all of this and I'm going to try to work it out and maybe I don't, we'll do the best I can for you, but this may be it somehow so like we had over 60 photos that were attached to our our claim i suppose but whatever we did at the dealer all of this stuff lived over here and then when we got moved or referred to grand design service it didn't move with but they still had access to it and i don't think that going to look for it at the dealer part is something that they inherently do without it's a reason to do it confusing yeah i don't and we don't i don't understand it. it's kind of the things that you learn that you learn as you go along um but so so there's that so if you're trying to talk so this is why it matters if you're trying to talk to grand design about things that happened at your dealer just save your breath and send it all to them specifically because then if you do get referred if you get moved um you call you get you know, forwarded to somebody else, it's all there and it's all in their system in house and things like that. You just really need to push and be your own advocate. Like, yes, honestly, that's... like I can't stress that enough. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like we followed all of the steps and we, it still got lost. Like mainly the thing was the roof, like uh, our frame flex was getting taken care of. 
but the roof was never addressed and we had followed all the steps and we had sent all the information and that's why I said we don't know if it's dealer or it was grand design somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. but uh, that was the most frustrating part for us this last probably two months was the dots weren't getting connected and we were advocating the whole time for us so that is probably my biggest vice is don't take no and be your own advocate yeah <laughs> number two on my list is is don't talk scheduling until you have oh, yeah. in some form of writing what it is that's going to be done so if you end up like us if it doesn't quite pass the smell test like if you don't feel good about it then like no i'm not like i i if, I if mean, and what no, are we all but all fair to say it was mass chaos because we do full time and we are in winter area with snow and we skirt and we are heavy so we were trying to get a date because we had to do skirt and have an idea when we had to take all of our skirting down. So I think it was kind of a mad rush. And we there. have like framed walls. I'll throw a picture in. We can look at it. Yeah, but I. It's a 48 hour process. Yeah, it's there, a there, process. But the, what she's saying is there was a lot. Go we, we were pressing them to know. To try if, and fix If they date. needed the trailer. Because we made a couple of trips for different inspections. And we were early-ish. We were like midway, I suppose. I think that some of this stuff was still early in the, you know, and not a lot of dealers are used to dealing with this. They're not used to doing the measuring. And so that could have been, a, there were a lot of things that could have been a part of it. But, um, so don't talk scheduling until they have it in writing. So, and you should, that's just good practice. And I would, I guess, and I say that, and then I realize that we didn't exactly do that. So, that's awkward but if you don't if they're saying they're going to do this fix then fine explain what this fix is like what what are you doing how are you doing it and and how does everything that you just told me how am i supposed to discern that from what's listed here in this email um and push for that yeah i don't i, I, felt, think I felt like you pushed for that and you we just got right i think it's reasonable well and so that if it wasn't so we were actually we'll come back let's get through this and then i'll give you the extras at the end so if you want to leave you can you don't have to listen to me rattle on but some of it's interesting so yeah so but with the don't schedule when you do the schedule when you're set you're set and it takes an act of god to get anything changed you have to go through this one specific channel um it sounds like to try to get changes made um, unless they find something that's bigger or important so all that aside, the last one I have is, so don't accept the information silos. And what that means is that you have people in this building that do this job. You have people in this building that do this job. It's an information silo, but it's the information moves up and down here. And then nobody talks across this way. And, and I just, that's just the way I feel. I think a lot of this happened that way was that we stayed over here in this silo dealing with these people who were nice. And I think did a, a fine job except for when they didn't or and mm -hmm. and if you could have just so transfer me forward the email who do i talk to i want to talk to somebody over here because these are the people that run the wrenches these are the people that do the things and and i want to know what this one line here that says you know because that's what happened to us is we had a line on the work order that just says frame flex upper cabinets and we're like well that doesn't say anything about anything else so either transfer me to this person over here that can tell me how what i'm concerned about is part of that you know or add something to that one because if you don't it's not going to be there i'm just telling you that's that's just the way that it works um yeah so that's all I have for that stuff. Do you have anything else you want to add on the, the original? I don't know. I'm looking on the quick message that's now 20 <laughs> I'm minutes. looking at my notes. So no, if there's anything closer. important, we'll edit it and I'll throw it in. You don't have to watch this part. So some other stuff to think about that I wanted to share that we figured out too, just corroborating our story a little bit, was as I started making these exchanges and throwing sending emails back and forth I became I came I started to realize that our original work orders 
were created in back in January and we were trying to talk about scheduling late at the end of February I'd have to get them out I'm, January and February no it wasn't in January we didn't start talking scheduling until into February there was almost 60 days from when the work the first work order was created to when we were sent the work order that's what it is I think I think it was almost 60 days two months thereabouts if it comes down to it I can check it doesn't matter it was a long time and the point was is that all throughout then I had been asking what work is being done because I don't think it adds up and I was always told I don't have that answer we don't know till it gets here and the reality of it was is that yes you did because you guys created the work order but you never sent that information to me to us until a the day after until a week after our appointment was set and then it was too late then you're locked in yes and then so and then so a lot of stuff like a lot of things you don't you know we kind of realized that we had a problem and we were in trouble and then that led us all to here overall um, i feel like our experience has been good mm-hmm. with green design the thing that just been the most frustrating is communication and our concerns just not being addressed and being i don't know left out if somebody would have listened to me yeah it could have all been avoided. And this, well, this was in a, we're, because we're full time. So my through other conversations here, it's just like this is exactly what I didn't want to happen. Yeah. Because we had to move out once, and we really thought we had a problem with the roof. And having an idea of what that meant, it's like the last thing that I wanted was to move out, send this thing to you to get half fixed, and then to come back and reschedule either with the dealer or with the factory again and move out a second time. It's like, fix this once. And I'd rather just get fixed at the factory because you have all of the stuff, you have all of the things, and you can do it in half the time because you can throw the labor at it and you have all the stuff. So, and that was a large part of the frustration is, is like if somebody would have just listened, it's transferred me. Like I, I, don't, I don't I don't speak a foreign language. I speak English and bad English and a little bit of mechanic. It's like, so send me to somebody that can do that and we could have ironed a lot of this out ahead of time, so... I think that's it. Yeah, I don't. We'll keep up to date. Um, we're going to try to wrinkle some of this stuff out with everyone. We still have big questions as to how, how our cabinets move and how nothing else moves. Um, they hadn't made it very far into the trailer, so I don't I don't want to I don't want to yeah, misrepresent. They hadn't, but at least to the last update we had, they hadn't found much broken steel. Um, they did find some stuff, and we'll we'll talk about that in a different video. Not the place for it here, um, but largely to our understanding is we don't have a bunch of broken frame parts, so we are we are on the hunt as to how all of this stuff moves and how how you explain that and how they are comfortable and or what solutions they have to the longevity of our unit now because if we see this much movement in a concentrated place instead of other ways that that could work out um we have concerns so keep you posted thanks for giving us your time okay watch for the blooper reel kayla did something really silly before this i didn't yeah okay